Christ, come have mercy on us. Come and mend what we separate. We are divided over things that are not your heart. Spirit, come show us the way. Oh, hallelujah, Christ is with us. In him we live and move and breathe. So with his breath inside our lungs now and forever we will sing. forgiveness we have surrendered to fears of our day turning brothers and sisters to enemies Jesus we need your grace oh hallelujah Christ is with us in him we live and move us, Lord. Oh, what can separate us from your love unites us? Your love unites us, Lord. Oh, what can separate us from your love unites us? Your love unites us, Lord. I'm going to give you just a minute or two to say hello to your neighbor. And you guys can say hello to each and every person in here today. Is this love that won't relent That's calling out with heaven's breath It's reaching wide to save our souls 
mercy's enough His grace is sufficient So come if you need it Forgiveness and healing His mercy is enough Oh, this is our hope The cross it has spoken Death is no more Christ is the Lord Oh, this is our hope your heart be troubled hold your head up high don't fear no evil fix your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you so take courage hold on be strong remember where our help comes from Jesus, 
seated at this time, uh, Kira will come forward for communion. Good morning and happy New Year's Eve, everyone. We are preparing to close the chapter on 2023 today. And we are offered the opportunity to reflect on this past year, but also to look ahead to the new one with a grateful heart. Whether this past year has brought you success, fulfillment, and joy, or maybe you faced grief setbacks and struggle. The new year is a time for us to refocus and renew our outlook on life. Speaking of looking ahead, how many of us have already started thinking about New Year's resolutions? Let's be honest. I was thinking on that the other day, and I was like, why would I 
I never keep them, do you? I'm, I just don't. What really is a resolution anyway? A resolution is defined as a firm decision to do or not to do something. Here's some New Year's stats for you. 38.5% of U.S. adults will set a New Year's resolution every single year. However, only 23% 23% will quit within the first week, and 36% make it past the first month. <laughs> and yet only 9% successfully keep their New Year's resolutions throughout the year. That reminded me of the narrow gate because I was doing some research here. In Matthew 7, 14, the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Luke 13, 24, work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom for many will try to enter but will fail, hence the 9%. So why do we fail? Well, it's our humanness. Our humanness prevents us from checking every box off that checklist. And many times we rely on ourselves to achieve the goal rather than look to the creator. And that's why we fall short. But a covenant from God is different. It's a promise that he will fulfill and it is backed by his power. God never breaks his promises to us, and that's what makes him different. You see, God always gives the very best of himself to us, the very best. He gives the first and the best to us, that he gave himself through the life and sacrifice of his only son, Jesus Christ. But do we really give our first and best back to God? If we're being honest with ourselves, we fall short every single day. I found this in the International Children's Bible and I found it so fitting. Numbers 18, 29. Choose the best and holiest part from what you are given this is the portion that you must give to the Lord. Now, if you don't mind, since we are starting a new year, there are many things that we're gonna face in the weeks and months ahead. And I found this prayer that I'd like to share about keeping God first in the new year. Dear God, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that for all you've allowed into our lives this past year, the good and the hard things that have reminded us how much we need and rely on your presence filling us every day. We pray for your spirit to lead us each step of this new year. We ask that you will guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask that you open the doors that need to be opened and close the ones that need to be shut tight. We ask that you help us release the grip on the things of which you have said no, not yet, or wait. And we ask for help to pursue you first above every dream and desire you've put within our hearts. We ask for your wisdom, your strength, and your power to be constantly present within us. We pray that you make us strong and courageous for the road ahead. Give us the ability beyond what we feel able and let, us, let your gifts flow freely through us so that you would be honored by the lives and others would be drawn to you.
We pray that you'll keep us far from the snares and traps of temptations, that you would whisper in our ear when we need to run and whisper in our hearts when we need to stand our ground. We pray for your protection over our families and friends. We ask for your hand to cover and keep us distanced from the enemy's evil intent, that you would be a barrier to surround us, that we'd be safe in your hands. We pray that you will give us discernment and insight beyond our years to understand your will, hear your voice, and know your ways. Loving God, as we come to your table today, we remember the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. May this bread and this wine be for us a means of grace, drawing us closer to you and to one another. In his name we pray, amen. At this time, if you wanna go ahead and get your communion cups ready. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it. He then broke it into pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. At this time, would the ushers come forward so we can pray for the offering? Gracious Father, all good gifts come from you, dear Lord. And from these riches, we bring this offering to you today. And we bring nothing that do doesn't already belong to you. Please use this offering to further the purpose of this church and for the benefit of those in need. We ask this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in your heavenly name. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. So 
Father, as we come to you this morning, I just pray for Rich as he brings your word. Lord, I pray for every heart in this room to be open and every mind to be open and that every word that he speaks comes directly from you. And we thank you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Herschel Christian Church. Just so you know, this morning I was having a conversation with Kelly B. And I think in the prayer room, there were people in the prayer room. Today's not the day that we're going to sing victory. What I mean by that, it was a little scary. We were all sitting here and we heard... <laughs> Okay, that's either our calling or they're moving rail cars, which they were moving rail cars. And I apologize for those of you that were late because of the train that had to go around and all that, but I am glad you're here today. If you decided to stay at home out there in TV land, welcome to Hershey Christian Church and your comfy PJs and your recliner, a cup of coffee, whatever it be. For you, <laughs> for you that are here, I'm sorry you had to get dressed. Other than that, I'm not sorry about anything. You're here today, and we are going to share the word. Today, I'm going to teach about unity. I'm not going to actually teach. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to read what's actually here. In the Bible, the truth. I'm going to speak the truth, if that's okay with you. Is that okay with you? All right. Give me a few minutes. Yeah, technology. Okay. 
in the meantime, I'll tell you my intro. Unity. Strange thing. Some of you know that I used to be a, a little guy football coach. I loved it more than anything in the world. I'd go back to it if I could, but I just, I, I can't physically. I can't run up and down the field with those boys. And as a coach, you have to do that. You have to be willing to, to walk the walk, talk the talk. Anybody that's ever coached, you know that. But unity. Let's say perhaps I, as a coach, went out there and said, fellas, we're going to run our offense this way. Johnny, your quarterback. Tommy, your running back. And I need linemen in front of them. The right side of the line, when Johnny gets the ball, I want you to turn around and tackle him. Now, the left side, I want you to continue to do your assignments of blocking the, the defense in front of you so that nobody gets to Johnny. Is that unity? For those of you that know football? No. My left side, my right side line, is to protect little Johnny when he's running the ball. We all play in unity. Simple game called football, but simple purpose, simple message in life. We should all play on the same team. Doesn't work that way. It's frustrating at times. Trust me, today in this, as Sammy would say, with you, not at you. So I'm giving you a pre-warning. I'm not at you because this is actually a message that I read straight from the truth that hit my heart that said, I got to tell it the best I can through his power, through my tongue, through my heart to you. Now, some of you will take it, some of you won't. That's not for me to decide. That's already been decided for. But I'm going to do the best I can to open your eyes to how the truth laid it out years ago, many, 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 many years ago. So hang tight, sit back. I'm going to read the text. Then I'm going to read it again, but we're going to study it as we go along. Here we go from Ephesians 4, 1 through 16. It is on unity in the church. We're going to pick up some key words along the way. Therefore, this is written by Paul. I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Always be patient with each other. Always making allowances for each other's faults. Foul. I'm not. I'm not always forgiven for other people's faults. I'm the first one to sit there and say, well, he's a fool. Well, she, or holy cow, or this or that. So I run, I run foul on that. Remember I said, I'm with you, not at you. Always making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Love. Love one another. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together always with peace. For there is one body, one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future.
as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Let that sink in. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Our God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all, always. Did you pick up on a key word? Father of all, in all, over all. However, he has given each one of us, a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that he says ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world, known as earth. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe, not just Hersher Christian Church, not just Kankakee County, not the United States of America, but the world, the world. Now, these are gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers. The responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we have all come to such unity in the faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Wow. You ready to do that in the new year? That's a challenge within itself. I'd like to be on what Kiara just spoke about, the 9% completion to fulfill that for a year, for many years, for the remainder of my time here on this earth. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind or new teaching. We will not be influenced, Uh uh-oh. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Do any of you guys know anybody like that? Half the people I go to work with every day, half the people I meet every day. Because there's another guy called Satan, AKA the devil. He plays vicious games. Vicious games. And as Sam says, he don't come ugly. This morning, while at the coffee table, or at the uh, kitchen table, practicing this and running through it one more time, I had my wife Michelle get me up at 7 o'clock because I was going to come here at 8, 8.30. She said, no. Why don't you go about 9? And I thought about it, and it's like, hmm. My sweet wife, God laid it on her heart to tell me that, because if I would have come here at eight, eight thirty, unbeknownst to me, even in this place, who would have showed up with my idle mind and idle time? The devil. He would have tried to get me off course was some idea. No, that doesn't sound good, Rich. You need, to, you need to slam home this. Be soft on them on this. Be hard on them on this. And trying to convince me to change what I had to say. Well, it didn't work. 
And thanks to God again that someone picked up on that. Thank you, Kelly. She came and talked to me. We prayed. Because I was getting really nervous. And right now, I'm as comfortable as can be. I could talk all day. I'm not going to because by the time I get done talking, there will only be one person here. That will be me. So the lights will be turned off, the sound will be turned off, and I'll be up here all by myself. So, God, I thank you for those two incredible women this morning. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other it helps the other parts grow. So right here, it's, it's telling us it's okay not to be complete. They're going to complete my day. They're going to help me with my day. You're going to help me with my day. I'm going to help you with your day. Whether it's me telling you a great joke, giving you a hug, whatever. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. We won't be perfect until we're up in the upper room. Okay? We won't be perfect until that day that we're called to heaven. And what a glorious day it'll be. So I want you to know that it's okay to be imperfect. But as being united as a church which Hersher Christian Church is becoming and is, and you can see it every day through the little things. Stop your busy lives because busyness, believe it or not, is the devil's work to sidetrack you from, okay? I'm not telling you to quit your job and not be busy and slack off and do all that. I'm not telling you to do that. But get rid of some of the busyness in your life so you can, one, Slow down, breathe, relieve stress. Stop and pray. Stop and pray. You know there's an old joke that everybody knows. At work when you're tired and you close your eyes for a minute, if your supervisor walks in, just lift your head and say, in Jesus' name. Can't fire you. That's what they all say. They can't fire you. They don't know if you're really praying or not. I know most of you in this room would actually pray if they did that because it would be a little sacrilege to do it. You come to church, you're on your friends, you're at church, you say that you're a Christian, but then you do that just so that you can stay out of trouble. So when you do get caught by your supervisor, just say in Jesus' name, but mean it that you prayed for peace during that day, during that time. Because outside those doors, it's not a perfect world. It never will be. And it's becoming more and more imperfect every day. If you don't think we're a part of it, hmm. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's pretty awesome. Me, a big burly guy, I'm not supposed to like that word love only with my wife, maybe with my son, because he's a guy too, and I'm supposed to raise him to be a big burly guy and, and all that. But I'll tell you what, I love me some love. I'll be honest with you. And God's love, whew, about 18 years running strong with God's love in me. Yeah, it took me that long to find God's love and to really grasp a hold of God's love. But if each and every one of us in this room and you at, TV, at home in TV land, grab it, grab it. And don't let go, because he ain't going to let go of you.
Fiera said it best in her prayer this morning. He gives us his first, even when we're at our worst. He gives us his first. So when he offers you that love, grab it by the reins. Love it. Love it because you are loved. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Know anybody like that? There's a lot of them out there, I'm sorry. But you and I, with God's love, oh, I'm going back to that key word. Sorry, guys. If you don't like the word love, I do. With God's love, we can love on them and show them how we can lead them to Christ so that they have love always, hope always, faith always. All right, there for a minute, I thought I lost you guys. Whew, okay, always. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. I'm gonna read that again. Their minds are full of darkness, they wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. Let me stop there for a second. And this just came to me. Think back to when you gave yourself to Christ. It may have been all your life. Your parents chose for you to get baptized, whether it be in a different denomination, you know, uh, sprinkling as a babe or full submersion as a young adult or yesterday or two weeks ago or 18 years like myself. Think back. Go down memory lane today when you leave here. Do it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. It's year end. Think about it and review. All the time leading up today to today, December 31st. Where you were, where you are. I can guarantee you there's going to be a smile on your face when you go down memory lane. Yeah, there's been some hiccups in the road. You didn't cause them. There's been some heartaches in there that you didn't cause. There may have been some things that got overblown that you caused. But ultimately, ultimately, he spoke to you in love to help you get through that, manage that, and conquer that because of his love. And some of you have brought those things to another member of the church or a friend you can confide in. That right there is love. That right there is unity. They'll go through it with you thick or thin. still keeps going on the bad side here. But that's all right, because we're not on the bad side. Still talking about the Gentiles. They have no sense of shame. They live lives for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. With you, not at you. Been there, done that. 
I was sent somebody that changed that within a snap. Just with her simple words, I need and I want. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. And yes, I've gone way past 4, 1 through 16. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. What's 2024 going to bring you? We don't know. But hopefully when we walk out these doors today and you wake up after my sermon, you'll be, you'll be full of hope, faith, and love. Hope that you can turn to one of us, all of us in this room, for encouragement. Because, hey, we got another 365 days in front of us, and every bit of 365 days, we're going to be challenged with something that goes against the grain. Trust me on that. If you're not, please, I got to meet you so I can hang out with you more often so it won't come my way. Faith, I got to have faith that I can be that person that you are that has, quote unquote, 364 and a half days of happiness. I'm kidding. But it, you have to have faith. You have to have faith. And if you build faith in unity, whew, imagine that. That's like being at a concert and the guy up there singing just stops mid-sentence and everybody else completes the song. Have you ever been on a concert and they do that? It's awesome. It ain't in perfect harmony, but it sounds cool. How cool would that be to have God lead us as he does and we finish what he leads us to do? What a harmonizing, unified front that would be. Love. Love what is right. Hate what is wrong. Hate's a bad word. I shouldn't even say hate. But yes, it probably correlates with bad things. Kelly's going to come up here and she's going to play a song. I heard her practice it this morning. Very powerful. I just want you guys to open your ears, open your hearts, and listen to it. Um, I leave you with this challenge this year. Get in a small group. We have plenty here. We have one for the women's group. We have one for the men. I hope eventually we can get one for for uh, married couples. But we got to grow, okay? And we are. We are. You guys are small but mighty and united. And I'm glad I get to be a part of that. I'm glad I get to get up here and talk about it. And people out in TV land, our viewers that aren't quote-unquote members but like watching us every now and then, get to hear Sam's message every week, my message every week, whoever does communion every week, and Kelly's beautiful music. Because it touches you. It touches you. And how I know that you come back every week. The cookies are great out there. The coffee's okay. It's Folgers. It's Starbucks dark roast. But the reason we come back here don't fool yourself is because 
you feel loved in a place where we are all united with our goods, with our bads. We work on them together, the good and the bad. I want you to know something. I love every single one of you, okay? Love's a very powerful word. I love you for each and every one of your little pieces that finishes my puzzle. And I mean that. I don't always probably act that way because the older I get, you youngins, you can turn me off. The older I get, I'm more to myself. And that's crazy. It should be in reverse. The older I get, the older you get, we should be pouring out what we know. And a lot of uh, older gentlemen do that that I know. I just, I guess I have to get to that point of flipping that switch to, hey, here, absorb, listen to where I've been and to what I've done. And that is a, is a little small glimpse of of what this church is because the older gentlemen here tell me stories and I take it to heart. I listen to them. The ladies, you guys rock it. I got to watch where I'm going or I'll fall. But seriously, I challenge you this year to build this church in unity, in love, in faith, hope, and I've already mentioned love. And the key word is always. Kelly's going to sing her song if I could have a leader come up here with me. And if you feel led to come up, you can. If you want, you can stay right in your seat. But if something's on your heart that you want to get clear and you want some kind of direction or you just need prayer, Please come up. I offer that to you. The Lord offers that to you. I thank you for coming today. And I'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the unity that Hersher Christian Church has built and will continue to build. Lord, I ask that each and every one of the, the members here at the church continue to grow, to, ter- to read your word, and just trust in you, Lord. Let us be united as one. I thank you. Amen. I can see it in your eyes So pull back the curtain Take off your disguise Whoever told you Ain't worth the fight The cross tells a story That'll change your mind Cause there's only love In the heart of God No shame in his open arms there's beauty from ashes so calm as you are and there's only love in the heart of God It's never too late. Run home to the Father. Let him clothe you with grace. Bury your burden. Break free from the fear. Step out of the shadows. There's no judgment here. Because there's only love.
Sitting there shaking his head, writing you off, leaving you lost. He's not sitting there shaking his head, wishing he'd never went to that cross. He's not sitting there shaking his head, writing you off, leaving you lost. He's not sitting there shaking his head. He went to that cross, he went to that cross. Cause he loved you so much. Heart of God. Amen. Thank you for coming. Go home and celebrate, however you will, bringing in the new year and putting the baggage of last year to rest and the good me- memories bring with you. I ask this in God's sweet and precious name. Amen. You are dismissed. 